Havoc. We all know great movies. We share them all the time. But here, we're going to share some great movies that haven't been seen by everybody. What constitutes an underseen movie? Well, if you haven't seen it, that pretty much constitutes it. And we're going to tell you about some great movies you may not have seen right now on Silver Screen Dudes Movie Matt Rushmore Podcast. Hey, screeners, how you doing? It's me, the one AJ, Anthony Jordan. And me, Nico Luro, and it is good to be back once again for another Top 10 show right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. And as I said at the top, listen, there's going to be a lot of debate about what constitutes an underseen movie on this topic, because ultimately, if I bring up a movie and there's 3, 5, 10, 20, I don't know, 100 people who are going to watch and go, oh, I've seen that, how does that constitute? Because for every 100 that have seen it, there's probably 10,000 that haven't. So... Bit of lateral thinking here. Bit of lateral thinking. Just because you've seen it doesn't mean it's not underseen. And with all that said, AJ, shall we talk some movies? Yeah, um, I'm just going to like continue on that. I've kind of played it really close to the ground. Some of them might not even be highly rated movies, but it's films that I happen to have stumbled across without hearing anything, seeing it, a trailer for it, even knowing it was in the cinema. And then by that proxy, it's there. I've also omitted anything foreign just on the basis of mm. it may not be, it may be underseen here. When I say foreign, I'm talking foreign speaking, but it may have been a huge, excuse me, a huge success in their native country. So with that, I, I've admitted those. Um, that's just the way I played it for this one. That's fair. All right, cool. Okay. So now let's talk some uh, movies. <laughs> yes, now before we like to talk some movies, would you like to tell everyone what the movie Mount Rushmore is all about? Yeah, it's basically a top 10 show between two best friends from school. It's been a long time of doing this now. Here's how the show actually works. AJ and I each get us on a topic. We go our separate ways. And we come right back here into this lovely little AI-generated video. Haha. <laughs> and deliver to you the Silver Screen Dudes, our individual top 10s. This week, I will go first, delivering my bottom three. AJ will then deliver his bottom three. I will deliver my next two. He will deliver his next two. And when we get to our top five choices, we will trade one apiece. If at any time while we are running off our individual top 10 list one person has a movie in a higher position that person will say punt there we and we will then punt and talk about that movie once we get to the higher position and once we have both rounded off our individual top 10 list we will create in the voice of matthew perry's character the dearly departed chandler bing the movie mount rushmore these are the four quintessential diverse musty movies of the genre which this week is Top 10 underseen movies. I'll give it a bit of that just so you guys don't get upset over what's yeah, underseen. Underseen, right. As per the silver screen dudes. <laughs> we'll, we'll go no with that way. No poll yeah. this week. Okay, guys, but do head on over to our X page at Movie MT Rushmore, where you can crown El Capitan El Dimero Order, the best of the best of the best, sir, with honors and in to quote the birds of Highlander. There can be only one. That's once we've created that. You go over there and vote. Also, please do check out at Movie Pulse for you, fronted by good old JT of We Love Movies. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just a chance to interact with you guys a bit more. Again, so I will pass the baton over to you. But this is Silver Screen Dudes Underseen Movies based on what we have in conversations with people, I would say. Because my number Indeed. Really so getting into my list now so my number my number 10 my number 10 my number 10 because i'm gonna bring <laughs> this is the biggest case of cheating i apologize um 30 movies for the price of one <laughs> it <may> go for it. <laughs> but when you hear it you'll kind of agree with me because it's a franchise that every time we hear someone talk about it we get happy but it's being spoken about less and less and less. And we have to, as movie fans, keep this franchise alive and kicking. AJ, pick 30. AJ, pick any one of these movies that you wish. Because I'm talking about the Carry On franchise. Okay, okay. Wow. Now tell me <laughs> I'm wrong. Do you know I'm the funny wrong, thing? Man. The funny thing is you're saying 30 and I'm like, I swear there's only 10 land before times. Like that's I was so hooked on that. <laughs> you better <laughs> see that first one, G. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, look, um, the, the carry on movies really look there are 
themes in them and there are jokes in them that have not stood the test of time. Um, they never go they never go down the end bomb route the way you kind of catch in faulty towers and you go, sorry, he said what? <laughs> like they never, was go, what? <laughs> yeah. they never yeah. gets to that level of profanity, but you know, they've got some very, very, very misogynistic jokes, very, very sexist jokes, huge amount of innuendo in there, which may not have aged well for some. I certainly think that you can either look at it the way I do, which is it's harmless fun and they're, you know, it's just a good comedy movie. Comedy movies are meant to have a bit of humor in them and humor is not for everyone. It's highly subjective. Or the other way, if you want to look at it as a cinephile, is to say that these are uh, <laughs> these are uh, pieces of Hollywood history. You know, oh, ultimately, yeah. it's almost a time capsule into this is what comedies used to look like. And, you know, you've had your brat packs, your rat packs. You've had Clooney and his gang. You've had Adam Sandler and his entourage. But the fact that Gerald... Monty Python crew. Yeah. Monty Python crew, thank you. Laurel and Hardy, of course, you're on a smaller basis. There's another thing you should actually see, see more of. But for Gerald Thomas to have kept his core group of actors, and it wasn't a small core, is that 15 actors who he pretty much used in as much capacity as he could throughout every single one of his movies, your Jim Dales, your Charles Hauntries, your Joan Sims, Happy Jakes, Kenneth Williams, Kenneth Connor, Sidney James. It's Winter. just... Oh, oh, Windsor, of course, thank you. Mrs. Carry On. Um, it's just a thing of beauty, man. It really, really is. Um, I, I've got personal favourites. We could very easily do at one point, AJ, a top 10 carry on, as and when you're ready to, to do that. I would be all for that. But yeah, the Carry On franchise needs to be kept alive. Anything you want to add, or can I move on to nine? So I, I would. The only thing I'd say is I agree, but I would have put them in a different category. I think Carry On falls under a, which should be revisited, um, as opposed to Underseen, because I feel like they're like they were one of the biggest franchises at a time. So I don't know how much it would qualify as Underseen at that it, in this day and age. Yes. Back then, I think they were one of the biggest. You're, you're actually, you're quite right. Um, yeah, you're making me rethink my list now, but I'll go with the latter point of what you just said, which is I'm very much curating the list that I've done this week for the purpose of the 28 and unders who yeah, may I'm not have seen talk. some of the, 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 the YouTube generation, as it were. Yes. Yeah. Gen, Gen Y. <laughs> Yeah. Gen Y, Gen Y T. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my number nine. Uh, we've both seen this one. Uh, we both are scared of this one, but we both admire what this film tries to do. Definitely underseen French movie called Martyrs. See this, I toyed with, and then I was like, "Do I go for the American version?" And I left it, as I said, because my my whole thing behind this, bro, is I don't know how big it was in France. If it was huge. How underseen is it? But again, it all depends on the perspective of what we're calling underseen. Yeah. Well, I think based on solely the fact that it's a French movie means that a lot of people won't have seen it, right? Because it's just a fact. People gravitate towards into, you know, English speaking movies, which is the national language of the world. Love it or hate it. Um, people will gravitate more to the Hollywood movies or to the Pinewood and Borenwood movies more than they will to. Cine Francais. It's just a fact, right? And within Cine Francais, you do get your breakout movies, you get taxis, and you get. Well, I'm struggling already, but you know, you, you uh, get. Emily. You get, you get Emily. That's a good breakout. Um, even Le Visiteur, bro. That's. But you know, for every. Like, the problem narrow. And taxi even La N, I would narrow. argue, is narrow. I think that N works. I think that N works. Live Easy Town and Taxi sadly don't because they, you had Just Visiting and you had Queen Latifah. But we'll, well, we'll this is the there. point. They got remade such such as yeah. the case that the originals weren't really seen. So it was Even a case of going, oh, yeah. that's going to yeah. retake yeah. it. Yeah. I don't think Martyrs was seen internationally that much. Maybe even less so in France because, it, listen, uh, this is as kind of art house indie as it gets, but it is a somber 
freaking movie, man. And we, we, we you know, yeah. we, we've said that whenever we bring up Masters on the show, we say, viewer beware, extreme discretion is advised when you watch this movie. It's cold, it's deliberate, it's hyper-violent, um, doesn't hold back on the gore, but it weirdly has a lot to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things that while it doesn't, it very much touches on religion and cultism. You know, that's that's the funny thing about it is it's the the the, the thesis behind it, the the reasons and actions of the people who are essentially the villains. You're like, oh, okay, and it's not completely out of the question. And I think that's one of the truer things out of it. It's it's terrible to see. It's sad to yeah. see, but it's, it's fact. And it does a doubly deuce on you, doesn't it? Where you're thinking that it's going to be, uh, you know, a kind of demon, exorcist, horror, monster, stalker type movie. And then it reveals itself to be something completely different. And that whole demon, th well, I won't spoil it, but that whole demon thing is not what it appears. It's that, huh, well played, Martyrs. Well played. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're disgusting, but well played. Uh, my number eight. I have brought this up before on some occasions, and I don't hear people talking about it enough. One of really, really underappreciated, not underappreciated, but definitely underseen British slash specifically Scottish Highlands wealth movie, Dog Soldiers. I freaking love this film. So much, AJ. Liam Cunningham is in it. Sean Pertwee is in it. And it's about a group of soldiers who are on a training mission in Scotland. And I mean training. They're literally just going through some rehearsals. And lo and behold, they get attacked while in the woods. And it, it's freaking Kurosawa Seven Samurai 101, bro. But they lay... Uh, Rachel Vice is in this too, I believe. Oh, they wow. literally, yeah, they buckle down inside this, you know, abandoned farmhouse while the invading forces, werewolves, are attacking them from all sides. They have to hold strong and protect their sanctuary of safety. And, bro, it's freaking brilliant. Is it B-movie as hell? Yeah. Can you see, see it's basically a man in a big wolf suit? Yeah. But they've done something clever whereby they've kind of stretched out the wolf suits to make them look extra big. It's it's so weird because there are moments of it that are actually genuinely quite creepy. Tantalizingly teasing you, maybe almost being scary, flirting with the idea of being scary, but being infinitely freaking cool and original. I imagine after seven years of the show, you still haven't seen Dog Soldiers. No, 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 no. no. It's so good, bro. No, um, do you know what? I, I, probably if I scrolled down my list of films that I haven't seen, this would have been one of them. Sorry, am I echoing? Mm. No, you're good. Cool. Um, yeah, it's um, it, 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 there's a lot of underseen films that I feel like, oh, this would have been the time to have caught it. Damn, now I think of it, that one on Disney that you brought up before. Shut up. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, that, that's a different topic for a different time. Well, maybe it will come up. But um, yeah, this is that this is one of those that I I knew it was in my head. I couldn't remember the name, and obviously I'm not gonna message you to try and find out what it is for this topic. And gratefully it's here. I think this is a topic I'm gonna use as a capsule for myself to be like, right, let's get on these. But again, <laughs> that's what it's about, bro. Edutaining <laughs> each other and edutaining others, right? That's the one, 100%. That's my bottom three. What's your bottom three? Okay, in at number 10 is a very funny one because I feel like it may be kind of popular to everyone. But for me, I hadn't heard of it. I don't know if it got a cinema release and I'm aware it has a TV series. So that kind of says it is popular. But then people might not even know that it had a film. So I'm going to go with, and if you're going to tell me it's completely wrong, I may have a backup straight away. But I'm going to go with what we do in the shadows. Well, firstly, that post you've got is of the TV show. Perfect. That's that just shows how underseen it could be because I just drew for the first one straight off. <laughs> I, mm, I mean, what we do in the shadows is considered cult now, so I guess you could argue it. Uh, have it. It's fine. 
look, but the fact that we can talk um, cult kind of says where it falls. Like, obviously, I toyed with the idea of a Donnie Darko, and I was like, that, that, that's too, that's too well known. You mention it, people know it. It's one of those. I feel the TV show has its its crowd. Those may not even know it's a film, like the, that episode where the originals turn back up. They may not, they don't know, just feel like, oh, Tiger's in it. But you don't know what's going on. So with that, I, I, I kind of toy with it. I just remember being like, huh, what? What do you mean, what we do in the shadow? What's this about? I, I was completely thrown by it. Um, yeah. And that that's what made me think of it. I'm like, and I, I feel there's a few people I've spoken to within my circles who aren't familiar with it. And by that token, I feel like it needs to be recognized as a as an underseen film, though it is in cult status. But I think it's one of the purest form of cult that you've got in this modern era. A New Zealand mockumentary vampire film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that absolutely bloody qualifies, mate. It's, are you there? Have we lost? No, bro, look, 100%. And that's the thing. I feel like it's one of those films that it it, it just needs to be seen. And I, I know it's a very great area, and that's why it's number 10, because I was very much on a... Does it really fall under the underseen? But like in my Russian haste, I do apologize. I went and got the wrong poster. I just thought what we did in the shadows and I went for it. But yes, yeah, I know it's I know it's got a following. It's built so much stuff that the seasons of the TV show are still going. The BBC three are just pumping it. Well, BBC iPlayer. Where is Tiger? Where is Tiger on this poster? Bro, I just saw the I just saw the words. I just saw that. There we go. Boom. And that, yeah. Schoolboy era. Schoolboy era. <laughs> Fair Don't enough. bring it back up, schoolboy. <laughs> yeah. What's your number yeah. nine? Okay, right. We're going to keep it in that side of town. We're going to move a bit from New Zealand, and we're going to move over to Australia. I brought this up before once. It's 100%. It's really quirky. If you see the beginning of this film, you would not... You, you might be tempted to cut off, but I would always oh, say... Oh, you said Australian movie. I've just remembered something. God damn it. Carry on. Okay. Um. Yeah. I just want to bring this up one more time. Bad Boy Bubby. It's a really, really kind of disturbing film, but it's one mm. that I don't want to say challenges mental health, but it 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 shows what appreciation of people are. So it does start off like really disturbing with a bit of incest and like um you know child abuse, adult abuse really, because Bubby has a very um, childlike mind. There's a condition that's not been addressed in there. But at the same time, his mother just who keeps him locked away, makes him believe that the world, you know, he needs a gas mask to leave and stuff like that mm-hmm. and all sorts of situations. And it's really disturbing. But it's as he escapes being within the confines of this apartment and experiments what the world has to offer, see what's out there, the realising that the world isn't a curse while not having the same people lie to him. He's, You know, it's an adult child experiencing the world and having to find a way of survival. It's a really interesting case study, I think is the best way to say mm. it. it. It goes from one that you could be a bit, you know, you, you might find a bit of humour in some of the, you know, the profanities is coming out and him using it. and But it's using little elements of stuff he's learned along the way and reapplying them in life. It Really good film. One that I didn't think I'd enjoy, but it, 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 it's, it's, it's stuck with me. It really has stuck with me. As, You've as brought this up before, haven't you? It came up once before. I can't remember. I might have been on the films rated 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Thought it sounded familiar. Yeah, yeah, I do need to get around to watching this. I really bloody do. It's an interesting one. So it's, yeah, as I said, get past the initial disturbing part because I watched it and I was like, what is this about? And it feels stupid. Low budget (laughs) because it's not got the the levels of Hollywood, you know, money in there. There's not many stars that you recognise, if any. It just depends on how well best you are in Australian TV yeah. and movies. But it, it's same to AJ. What is this about? A good sign that you might either love or hate a movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 worth a watch. It's a very very interesting film that, that takes such a turn from what you originally believe it to be to what it ends up as as a film. It's definitely recommended film to watch. Well, I haven't got around to it yet, so I can't comment. What's your next one? This is one that I bring up quite a bit in terms of 100% on Rotten Tomatoes and just not seeing because I don't really prescribe to the whole Citizen Kane is the best film, but RKO 281, the making. Well done. Well done. The making of Citizen Kane, I feel, is a film that has not been seen enough. I know it's not. Even when we done just a couple of weeks ago films of 1999, Daniel was like, you what? Come again? And this yeah. is a guy who does films. 
bringing it up to yourself you hadn't seen it and i believe one of the one of the best things and this is i'm going to bring this up twice um the only reason this is so low is because it's something i've brought up a few times in within the past few years tv movies can slap because this didn't have a cinema really of course they it. can it, it you know it's got quite a strong cast which i suppose helps but this i've i've, I've talked about it enough but if you are someone who's into film and you've heard that citizen kane is the greatest if not one of the greatest films of all time do some research into how it's made very much in the same vein of you've got the room and the disaster artist you have mm. citizen kane and you have rko 281 i very much recommend watching this film i do need to get around to it it's true um i'm fa i listen I don't know what the greatest film of all time is. I would listen to noise about it being Citizen Kane. Um, because just because of what it did in the way it made the movie. But I, I, for that reason, I'm very interested to see indeed how the movie was made. Okay, my number seven. My number seven. I think you'll agree with me on this. I know you've seen this one and it may have slipped your mind. It kind of highlights the point I'm making. Uh, it's a recent one, actually. From the last sort of five to seven years, I think Chris Evans and McKenna Grace gifted. See, yeah, this is one of those that, yeah, I think I, on principle, I agree. No one saw this, Maybe not everyone's watched it. Yeah, no one um, saw this. I went into that cinema, it was empty. That movie stayed in the cinema in the UK. I can only speak for the UK two weeks. The performances in that were fantastic, no one got any Oscar recognition. It flopped at the box office. I don't ever remember seeing it on streaming, being advertised on Amazon's banner other than maybe Beyond the Week. Like, no advertising went into this movie. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of films. Have you seen it? Good for you. It's a damn good film. There's a lot of films that are very new that I've kind of left out, which I, I toyed with. Gifted isn't one of them. There's a lot that came out this year. Well, there's one that came out this year and two that came out last year that I was very tempted to bring up. Um, mm. I won't say in case they're on your list. But Gifted, yeah, for, for all intents, that's one of those other films that I feel could have done with a lot of love. Um, you know, I think Room has so much love, and people, you know, I'm not saying people... Oh, but got Room's it critically up. acclaimed. You can't say a movie that's that critically acclaimed, wins Best Picture at the Oscars, gets Brie Larson... Brie Larson, yeah, Brie Larson, yeah. her best best leading actress. Like, come on, that's... I was I was going to say it's under scene. Yeah, I wasn't saying that. I was saying it, it kind of sparked an interest of films of adult child relationship films because you had this, and then um, uh, Jacob Tremblay came back in Wonder, which was also a great film, which I feel was slightly under scene. But they are good little films. They are nice films, and Wonder, mm -hmm. Wonder out the, um, yeah. Gifted outdoes wonder. Sorry, is what I wanted to say. This is I really did enjoy this film. I thought it was it was tops. It's great, and it was such. It was it came for me personally at such a great time because it, it's nice when you see actors like look at Downey Jr. just winning, you know, for best supporting actor. You know, we've been saying for a while like, hey, yo, Downey needs a bit of a career revival here. Yeah. Was dying, man. What's he really done? Well, he's just gone on one a supporting actor Oscar. I'm so happy for him. Um, I think it was really important that Chris Evans show the world that he's got more than just the Steve Rogers gear. Yeah. Uh, funny Boy, enough, that's he... what I was going to bring up as well. Yeah. Boy, did he do it here. Yeah. Like, do not doubt the caliber of this man. He's serious. Yeah. It was it, yeah. was it was it was a really warming film, and that's the thing, as you said, it was it was more than just. What's up, Siri? What do you okay, I found this on the web for he's serious. Check it out. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> what the Siri? What did you make a malfunction? But what word triggered the AI to get involved there? Because I don't know. I can't figure it out. AJ. They're listening. I'm telling you, <laughs> freaking Skynet. They are listening to us. <laughs> They're serious. <laughs> In the vein of Chris Evans showed he's more than Steve Rogers. He's serious. Okay, and I, I found this on the net for he's serious. What? Well, that's the thing. Because I would have said he's serious would have been the part that might have sounded like 
what would trigger your AI again, so I'm not going to say it. Yeah, but it's weird that he that the AI then anyway. We digress. Awesome Just... film. Yeah. Awesome <laughs> film, and anyway, touching film as well. It's got really touching from which is what I mean by Chris Evans showed he's got that gear. Shush, Siri. Um, six is one I brought up before. I know you haven't seen it, and I know most of the world hasn't seen it because it's a freaking Thai film. You know why I'm going with this King Narisuan, the legend you know of King Narisuan. Me with this film, this is one that AJ Vision has faulted me on. I can't find it. I have tried to see it. It's hard to find. It is hard to find. Highlights the point. Uh, that that it's that's very hard, hard to find. It comes. Thing. I think there's like five parts to this now. Yeah. I kind of tapped out after part three. Part one and two are masterful, masterful films. Like. There's actually been some quite unique films that came out of the you know, the Thai film industry, which have been readapted into, into Hollywood films. Um, obviously, we all talk about Japanese and Korean cinema. Thai cinema has got it, 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 nowhere near the same level, but it's got some notable films, you know. This is up there, man. Like, for the budget that it had and for the, no disrespect, but for the country that it was made in and, you know, without any notable film creators, it has no business being as good as it is. Something just it hit is. me. What's that? Something just hit me and I'm so upset. You found another AJ Vision method for King Nadis one. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Just another film set in Thailand. Film set in Thailand, film set in Thailand. Go on. Your film. So it's not on your list either, no? Tom Yam Gong? Prayer Before Dawn. Punt. <laughs> That's what I said. I said your film. I bitch said I didn't want to bring it up because it may have been your <laughs> punt. <laughs> punt and be silent. <laughs> so King that is one for those of you who haven't seen it. It's a fascinating movie about one of the kings of Thailand who is offered as a young boy as a to kind of token gesture to the Burmese invading army, and the part part one which I've got the poster up here for, you know, the hostage of Hong Sawadi. Hong Sawadi was the ruler of Burma, and he took a real liking to young Narisuan and didn't military train him, but trained him as kind of a monk. He is, at the end of the first movie is him escaping Burma in captivity and returning to Thailand to become badass modern king. And then he goes to war against the Burmese in part two. And because he spent most of his young life living with them, he knows how they think. It's great. It's freaking great. That was my number six. What's your number seven? Right. And at number seven is one of those. Well, to be fair, I could describe it, but I'll just say check one of the links of the Silver Screen Dudes because we celebrated it being 20 years old just last week. So it's the comedy of comedies for us. It's Euro Trip, baby. Scotty I, I, doesn't I... know that the owner <laughs> and me do it in my van every Sunday. She tells him she's in church, but she doesn't go. Now she's down on her knees and Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> so good. It's, I feel like it could be the most underseen and underrated comedy of the 21st century. Um, See, it, it's, it's just absolutely hilarious unexpected it's got all the quirks that you would like if you were of our era it's the comedy that you would appreciate but it just fell under the banner it just felt like an absolute in 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 a world of 12 million stifflers that existed in every american pie dvd that came out this is what euro trip felt like it was as well it's like one of those films that you'll watch but i'm watching it because i'm watching it but it won't be great how wrong can you be because euro trip Deserves so much more acclaim than it got. I'm not saying it's Oscar worthy, no, but I'm just saying when I say acclaim, no. but it, yeah, no, I'm it, it's just some absolute bat crap crazy fun, like it's absolutely hilarious. It's got so much, but I'm not going to di digress any further. Click the link, <laughs> check out our throwback Thursday, our uh, just how good was Euro Trip, and you'll see where the silver screen dudes rate this film. Great comedy from the beginning, ain't it, ain't it quite sad that you know a comedy based on the pure fact that it is a comedy can never really be considered 
in the running for Oscar, Oscar contention. It's very sad. It is. It um, is. Yeah, man. I I think Euro Trip is it's a feat of absolute beauty, man. Boy, even old boy has a pen pal in Europe from America, and he wants to through mistaken identity realizes that he's not talking to a man he's actually talking to a woman but realizes too late so while he's brushed off the man for making sexual advances realizes it was a woman making sexual advances on him and oh my god i really want that woman to keep making sexual advances on me so now i'm gonna go and be a right stalker and track her down in germany after she's blocked me on email it really isn't good for 2024 but it's freaking great no matter, no matter what um, so he basically goes across I think, he, yeah, he does go to the UK, doesn't he? Because he runs into Vinnie Jones. So he goes across the UK, Bratislava, the, the, the Vatican. Like, it's just, uh, it's, it's just brilliant. And Bratislava will always be my highlight. That, and I, that was obviously the highlight. But the other one of the way they mock Eastern Europe, and I'm not here to, like, dismiss anything, but it's like, I found a dollar. <laughs> just, <Yes. laughs> I'll just leave it at that. No spoilers. I open like, my own okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love it. What's your number six? In at number six, a lot of these films are films that I've brought up along the way um, before. And this is one that I feel is just underseen. Just like Eurotrip, I stumbled across on BBC Two one night. This is another mm. film that BBC Two was just a hidden gem for me that I stumbled across. Alpha Dog. This is one of the first films I've seen um, Justin Timberlake yeah, yeah, yeah. in. It's um, Bruce Willis as well. Um, it's actually based on a film. I know, I know. I have seen this way back. Like, I think this case, I saw this in like my second year of living in Thailand. So this is like 2007. This goes back there. Could well be. Could well be. Um, um, yeah, it's about like those, those, those that crazy murder spree that happens in a very short period of time, isn't it? Like they're trying to hide the crime they've done, and as a result, people are getting killed. No, remind um, me. Oh, I'm sure it's like 66. Um, some crazy amount of people get killed because these guys are trying to keep the crime they committed a secret. Well, I, what I, I don't remember people. I think some of the kids got killed up. The ones who committed the crime got killed up. Essentially, what happens is they've kidnapped this kid for one reason or another for money. But the kid that they've kidnapped is Bruce Willis's son, and Bruce Willis is an actual mafia guy. Like he's he's a he's a crime lord. He's an actual yeah. crime lord. So he's out to get his son back, and they are going to pay the price. But while they're holding him back, and they've got him held for this ransom, it's the purest form of Stockholm syndrome you'll ever see. The kid actually likes the he, bec he befriends the people that are with him, but there's this thing of him now showing how to act in order to best get the money out of it out of his dad. But it's also going to come with some consequences. Um, it was it, it's a one time watch, but it's always one of those films that I feel like I need to go back and watch. It was something I was like, wow, this this film's nuts. And then when you actually you know you read at the end, this was based on the truth, like. The, the outcome, and you're like, oh, this was real. You know, there are films that happen, you watch it, and then you, you you get so invested, but you actually forget it's based in real life. This was one of them that, when you read it after, you're like, oh, my days. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. yeah? Yeah, so. Yeah, no, I, re I remember Alpha Dog being very, very, very good when I saw yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's got, like, the world's greatest rating, when I, even when I checked it recently. And it's one that, again, completely under the radar, you know? Um, but I, I was taken in by it. There was nothing that made me think, oh, that's a bit weak. I just had a really good film that I sat back with. That you, you, yeah. you I was just really invested in the narrative. Yeah. I agree. The reason I've got my phone out is to prep for the next movie. Because <laughs> it has one of the craziest casts that, you, that, that you'll find. And when you consider the type of movie it is, it just makes... It makes no sense. <laughs> uh, I'm just making sure I've got... Yeah, here we go. There's more. God, there's more than bloody hell. It's like never-ending. Sorry, I'll be with you in just a sec. There you go. All right, AJ. My number five. If I have brought it up, I haven't brought it up often. Um, one of the best drug movies I've ever seen. Maybe it's, it's in contention for the best. 
Not a movie you smoke weed to, a movie that, like a train spotting, tells an extremely, extremely cautionary tale about the use of Class A in a recreational capacity and where that can lead you. Uh, spun. This movie. You've brought this up is, once before. Once. Uh huh. It's mm -hmm. freaking crazy, this movie. So here's a weird thing Tony K. The guy who directed American History X and who got kind of excommunicado from Hollywood has a very, very small blink and you'll miss it role in this. So that's a fun bit of movie trivia for you there. But to go through the list of people in this movie, Peter Stormare or Stormar, if you want to say it his proper Swedish way, Eric Roberts, Nicholas Gonzalez, Mina Suvari, Mickey Rourke. Brittany Murphy, John Leguizamo, and Jason Schwartzman. And they are all cooked out on meth. And it shows you the bad places that meth can take you. Jason Schwartzman, main character, he's essentially a tweaker. He's just trying to get from one place to another without much direction day-to-day, minute-to-minute, looking for his next fix, his next hit, yeah? And mm -hmm. he ends up at his dealer's place, the dealer played by John Leguizamo. In John Leguizamo's place, you've got people like Muna Suvari and Brittany Murphy hanging around. It's essentially a drug den. They're chilling out, they're getting high, they're doing their thing. You've got Mickey Rourke, who plays the cook, the guy who creates this meth who Brittany Murphy happens to be dating. You've got then the big head honcho. You've got the cops being played by Peter Stormer, who are, who's chasing Jason Schwartzman and staking out John Leguizamo's house. So it's all very basic. I'm not telling you much of a story here because the point of the movie is there isn't much of a story. It's very, very much just a lens of a day in the life. This is how bad it looks when you're on this stuff. Or rather, this is how bad it can look. Because they also show you how rosy and peachy it can be at the top when you're ruling the roost. But they show you the whole hierarchy of uh, the, the meh hierarchy from the big kingpin to the cook to the dealer to the tweaker. And the movie is shot in a way which is... It, it's like Tony Scott took meth and made a movie. Like... It's so gritty and visceral and unsettling and uncomfortable with the choice of edits they do, some of the sounds they use, the fact that they'll take the camera and go, you know, up close shots like that, where you're just like, get out my face, Jesus. It's really the whole movie is kind of like an invasion of your senses and an invasion of personal space. It's purposefully uncomfortable. It's a work of art, a nasty work of art, but a work of art nonetheless. Yeah, but listen, this is what it's all about. It, it, it's the appreciation and the, the way that you can highlight stuff. And sometimes it's too taboo to touch sometimes, but it doesn't mean the story shouldn't be told. And this is a case of it by the sounds of it. Oh, it's extremely <laughs> taboo, but it's extremely wonderful. What's your number five? I'm down for it. This is this is like one of my first hidden gems in the world of AJ, and it's the second of the TV movies that I brought up. Um, good old Mario Lopez, AC Slater from Saved by the Bell. Ah, I knew Greg you were going to bring this up. <laughs> the Greg Lugano story. Available on YouTube, probably with subtitles now if you find it. Uh, really, like, again, one of these weird things, TV movies that has, like, really great, viewings by me like just random stumble across that's what this was a random this goes across. back to fulham car park shed days doesn't it <laughs> yeah this, Jesus, uh, this is a silver screen throwback if you've been yeah, with us that's why it's so high had i brought it up a lot more it would have been lower down mind you it's middle ground at this point but mm. um it's the story of greg Luganis, uh, uh, the olympian gold medalist the, that diver but it's not just the story of the prominence of how he got to the gold it's the story of his life the coming what well, i won't say coming out 
coming to terms, but the coming out, um, being a homosexual, the abusive relationships he was in, the way he's being treated by competitors and those around him for being homosexual and the whole theory of him being him being gay, does that also mean he's AIDS? And then him hitting the back of his head and bleeding and people not wanting to help him and stuff like that. It, it, it was so such a blow away. It, it's amazing that I watched the film because I saw Slater. I was like, oh, what's he doing? I left mm. because of Greg Cooper. Um, regardless, like it, it, it's such a story that you're like, it actually, it was amazing that I could take away from, because when you first start watching the film, and it, again, we all know Slater to be, this is Mario Lopez, but anyone who's seen Saved by the Bell, we all know him to be the muscle jock. He, so you're like, okay, well, here we go, great casting. The, mu- <laughs> the sports jock playing a sports star in this film. I wonder what's going to happen. Completely completely taken away from that by the end of it it was such a revealing story um in the vein that we've always talked about how you can get a, a serious version of cool running in a way that we talk about a eddie the eagle this is another olympic story that i feel needs to be told and it's i i was completely shocked and taken aback by how good this film was you've sung its praise in in high regard many many a time um, yeah. Seven years, I still haven't bloody seen it. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, it is available on YouTube. However, mm. it might just have like the subtitles, like Spanish subtitles on it now. But it's it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's not a problem. It's all just ignore the subtitles or read it. No, no me no yeah. importa. It's possible de ver. Exactly. Um, so. All right, man. I'm going back to France for my number four. Cool. I think undoubtedly one of the all-time great French actors is Mr. Gérard Depardieu. I agree. But there's a little family movie he's done. Got remade with uh, not Heidi Klum, what's her bloody name? Catherine Heigl. Um, there you go. Catherine Heigl. And the, ori- the Hold original... Hold on. No. What? That's well seen. Which my father the hero. Yeah, the remake is well seen. You're gonna tell me Mon Père Sur Hero is well seen. Well, I'm pretty sure it was kind of a storm in France. I don't think it was an averagely seen film there, bro. I, I mean I I'm talking outside of France, bro. I get when, that, but in the same vein that the, the fact that we've still got Jehad Dipadjou playing the father in My Father the Hero makes it kind of difficult. Brother, okay, this film in 1991. It's old. I'm aware of that. It is This old, falls under brother. the carry-on bracket. I'll, I'll give it to you in, in this vein, yes. But I old, think you kind of still... French, like, what's her face? Most be- yeah, Marie Marie Guylaine, so gorgeous. I mean, <laughs> Marie Guylaine is just one of the all-time beautiful women. Oh, mon Dieu, quelle est jolie! Um, I'm actually gonna go on a ramble here and say I don't think people have seen this. Um, maybe they've seen that khaki remake with. Uh, Catherine Heigl, but man, father, divorced father who takes his daughter to Mauritius, and the daughter starts conjuring up these insane stories about who this strange man, her father, but her strange man in the stories is, oh, he's uh, he's special forces, oh, he kidnapped me when I was young and made me his lover, oh, he's... Uh, He's my sex life partner. Like every, for some reason, because apparently little girls are afraid of their dads, she just refuses to tell the truth about who her father is. And she feels the need as a kind of obsessive compulsive liar to build up a fantasy story, not just to make herself seem more interesting, but to attract a certain young gentleman. And then, but halfway through the movie, Gérard Depardieu, the father, finds out about these stories. And the title of My Father the Hero, he plays along with them. 
in order for her to be able to get the boy that she wants, her father, play, not with all of them, but with he plays along with some radically obscure stories, thereby having to bring his own brand of comedy and wit to some of these. <laughs> the stories are insane. Absolutely insane that she makes up about him and he plays along with it. And yeah, it's it's so heartwarming. And I think, especially now as a dad, I'm watching this, but I'm still like, I'm not sure I would go that good. <laughs> there's some there's some things she says to I'm like, young lady, we need to have a discussion. <laughs> a talk needs to be had because this this is this is kind of just not okay what you're doing. Your number four, please, AJ. I mean, look, yeah, all I can say is, like, it has been an age. So even hearing it, it's like, oh, my God, I need to see this film again. But, yeah, it, it. I'm not sure how much it's been seen from it. it hasn't. Okay, I originally saw this as a DVD. Um, it's available on Disney+. Plus. I was in there for um, DMX. And, yeah, stuck with it. I've brought it up before. These are films that I've brought up before, people. A lot of them, nothing's going to be really new here. Um, Never Die Alone. What is this? Uh, this is a film with DMX playing. So, believe it or not, we've got David Arquette who starts the film off, and he's oh, no, no, no. report. Yeah, exactly. Alarm bells, right? But he's playing this tape recorder, and it's all to do with this relationship he's had with this this guy who's just recently died by the name of King David, played by DMX. And it's literally DMX going through his story of being a young kid and his rise to being this menacing drug dealer and everything along there. But in that whole time, he's built, you know, he's had a few relationships. He finds out he had a son. He had a bit of a trauma, uh, a, a troublesome relationship with the mother. And then it's something that is, he's, he's, he's been on a bit of a quest to find his son, but it's all of these missions and how he's treated all of those around him in the essence of trying to be top dog, essentially in, in, in the drug world and the consequences that one has to pay for it. And it's like, once you've got there, but you've done it alone, is it worth it, essentially? Mm. You know? It, it's, it's, I'm very sure it's on Disney Plus now. Um, I, this was a film, there's a strong chance it may even come up in our, in our just how good or how bad was. I think it's, it's, it might be in that 20-year territory right about <laughs> um, it may It may have just passed the 20-year territory. But I remember watching this a few times those decades ago, and I was really taken in by it. I'm, again, let's not expect the world's greatest acting. We're talking David Arquette and DMX, but <laughs> but as a low budget kind I of movie, miss DMX, I freaking miss right, listen. DMX. DMX is always someone I've, I've got I've, I've got a lot of love for. Um, I enjoyed him in Romeo Must Die. I enjoyed him in this film, but I'm not going to say he was the world's greatest actor or um, the one he done the other film he done with Jet Li and the one he done with Steven Seagal. I've watched them all, Exit Wounds being one of them. But yeah. Oh Never yes, be, Exit you know. Wounds. God damn. <laughs> wow. There's yeah. a throwback. Yeah. There you are. There we are. But um yeah, I, I enjoyed this film. I really did enjoy this film when I saw it. And I feel like God, Exit I Wounds just made me feel my age there, bro. Wow. <laughs> Freaking Exit yeah. Wounds. Man brought up Exit Wounds, you know. Wow, <laughs> back, it? it does go back. Wow, Steven Seagal and exit wounds. Wow, cheers, bro. Yes, I'm nearly 40 and I'm oh man, god damn. All right, cool. That was your four, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. My three, I hazard a guess. I actually may never have brought this up. AJ, are you ready? Hit me. Oh, are you ready? My number I three, agree. starring an extremely young, and I mean extremely young, Jason Gordon Levitt. Mysterious Skin. Oh, it's got, what's her name as well? Yeah. Madeline the Spy. Um, Michelle Fatchenberg, is that her name? Uh, it is indeed. Michelle Fatchenberg. Yeah. Well done. It's this film left a real impact on me. I was here's some craziness. I was still living in Notting Hill at this time. Sounds about the right last for the young, yeah, Gordon yeah. film. 
that was the last time. And this wasn't Hugh Grant, Notting Hill people. The freaking Yardies were three blocks down from me. This is Notting Hill when it wasn't nice. Like, I didn't have the privilege of being in Hugh Grant's Notting Hill, unfortunately. Um, I, just, I could just hear the internet screaming at me. Oh, posh. See you next Tuesday living in Notting Hill. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> when it became Hugh Grant, we moved to Harlesden. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. I mean, he's not like These are facts. <laughs> These are facts. <laughs> We're from freaking Yardy Town, Notting Hill, bloody Halst. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Oh God, there are tears in my eyes. But yeah, you still don't oh. f with Halston. You no, still don't F with no, Halls, though. Even though it has a Costa Coffee on the corner. Yeah, yeah. Mysterious skin. Let me bring it right back up to my number three, because this was a weird old tangent. Mysterious skin. Um, one of JGL's youngest, youngest roles. And, dude, it's quite the thing of beauty. Both him and his friend played by... I'm not even going to pretend. Let me IMDB this. The friend played by Brady Cobert. That's it. The friend played by Brady Cobert. Have a very, very unsettling childhood trauma. Very unsettling. I don't want to reveal too much because it's kind yeah, of don't, part don't. of the charm of it. But Brady Cobert on the back end of this trauma has an obsession with UFOs. And JGL's character becomes... I mean... The gay gigolo becomes a becomes a streetwalker, and bad things continue to happen to them as a result of them going down these lives that are relevant to those lives, which are in concurrence relevance to what set them down this route. Is Les is like life inception, dude. I've seen it once, and it has stuck with me for over twenty years. This film is brilliant. And real talk, I don't think I've ever heard anyone discuss it. There was one film I toyed with that was kind of similar to that. Like, but it's not, it's not not in the same vein. It's just one of those films that I really appreciated. And I'm, yeah, I nearly brought it up just to get mm. things. Okay. I'm, I'm interested in that one. I may That may be seen quicker than expected. It's really honest. good. Um, I'm actually going to do a quick dive here into find where can it be watched. Okay, while you do, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. While you check that out, I will go move on to my number three. Now, See. this film, um, short of my mate John, I don't know anyone else who's seen this. I think my sister saw it with me when it landed on Sky. Uh, short of that, I don't know anyone who's seen it. It stars the ever controversial name that is Jada Pinkett Smith. I can't remember the name of the main actor on this, but it's Jason's Lyric. Now, this film... What is this? This film is deep. Now, I remember watching it, and I shouldn't laugh, but it, I actually started watching this film thinking it was going to be a comedy. I just remember seeing some kids getting disciplined, and like the dad was going old school. Now, if you, if, if you know, you know. I was like, oh, this, this film looks like it's going to be nuts. What a turn. It's literally about two brothers who obviously grew up together, but have taken two very different routes. But with that, the you've got one brother who is Jason, who is very much um, on the straight edge. His brother's trying to do more of the hood stuff, is always getting into trouble, but Jason's always bailing him out. Insert Lyric, played by Jada Pinkett. So while Jason's on the right course, he's now met a woman, and you know his attention is now leaning more that way but he's still there for his brother but he's now trying to just you know do the right thing and build a family and get on with it mm -hmm. um this, i'm going way back when i've seen this but when i saw under scenes films i just haven't had a chance to rewatch it you know it's 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 this relationship that's there between the two brothers but it's like i don't have time to keep bailing you up because i'm trying to do my thing but in that the brother is still getting involved in some really shady crap and jason is still trying to bail him out but still like more and more disowning him because it's like 
enough. Like, this has happened since we were kids. Yes, we went through crap and what have you, but this has got to stop. And it takes a turn, but it is a, it was a hard hitting film. I was like, I remember watching this as a kid. Now, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, Jason's lyric came out in maybe 94. Sorry, I'm going to Google this really quickly. Um, yeah, 1994. So I wasn't that old, but it's one of those where everyone else has fallen asleep and you just go for a cheeky film on Sky <laughs> and watched it. Great film. Absolutely awesome. Um, and I, it's just really not spoken about. I don't even know where to find it. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, I think when I grabbed the poster, I saw it's on Plex. Good old Plex that gave me whatever film it did the last time. Totally free, just click away. So if you do have a chance, I'd say try and find that one because it was it's a good film. Jason's lyric. Okay, lots of freaking new films tonight, huh? All right. Yeah. My number two. The punch from earlier. <laughs> the unexpected pun. The, the unexpected, unexpected pun. Bro, truly, truly one of the best films I've seen in the 21st century in my top 10 of new movies I've ever seen. A Prayer Before Dawn. Um, big the Billy Moore big. story. Joe Cole stars in this, and dude, it's harrowing. This film. Have you have, have you got around to seeing it? No, I've watched it. I've watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know yeah. how freaking good it is. Let me ask you, because I speak Thai, so the fact that it wasn't subtitled for me never actually threw me off. But then I realized that they're not subtitling a lot of what the Thais are saying because it's really, it makes it more relatable to the situation. Correct, and, and I wanted I to know: did that for someone who didn't it speak? Make, it, the, the, one, one of the things that happened with this film is it's unsettling off the bat. <laughs> Literally off yeah. the bat, it's unsettling, and that's what I remember with it. And I remember, like, again, with I will be realistic and honest here with AJ Vision. Sometimes you procure a film, and then you're like, mm, might need to find another one because I need the subtitles, but. This one, I think I tried maybe one or two. I can't remember if I did. But in the same breath, I was like, ah, there aren't subtitles. But because of the way he's like, I don't understand what you're saying. I need It, it, it hits you so freaking hard that you're like, okay. Like, you, you're in the journey directly because of it, you know? And that helped so much. It, so it, the uh, point of that did come across to you then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So Billy Moore was, and I've met Billy Moore. He, he used to, ba basically, Billy Moore it was a real semi-serious semi, semi -serious Thai boxer, but he was one of those expats who moved out to Thailand, discovered Thai boxing, and was pretty good at it. <laughs> I met him after the events of this movie. Um, but essentially, what, what happened to him is, you know, he got involved with the wrong crowd, he got involved with dealing methamphetamine, and he got busted. And he ended up in Thai prison. And a drug bust in Thailand is no little thing. And it's this all happens in the first two, three minutes of the movie. And it ends up him then being in a extremely hostile prison environment. Um, you know, sort of think 20, 30 men in one cell. No privacy whatsoever. There's no space none, for that. None. No, zero you know, privacy. One of the things I would say, sorry to cut you, is like, yeah. If you can't picture it, picture like one of those mad episodes of Banged Up Abroad. It's yeah. literally one of those situations where you're just like, this isn't a UK prison. This is this is intense. No, yeah. it's crazy to think, isn't it, that the UK prisons, if anything, comparatively look like luxury, right? Oh, yeah. Compa yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to what this guy went through in, in his prison. Um, and yeah, man, it's about him. It, it's a fight for survival inside prison because there's no magical escape here. There's no hope at the end of the rainbow light. No, 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 no. And the movie makes that very clear from the get-go. This is not a movie about like what the Shawshank did. Hope. Mm -mm. This ain't that, son. This movie is about survival. Survival of the human soul in one of the most repressive and violent and hostile places in the world while dealing with a raging drug addiction always having to look over your shoulder at who's coming for you. And somehow the ray of hope is Muay Thai. Because, you know, the Thai boxers in there who happen to be banged up, because Thailand is the national sport of the Kingdom of Thailand, get given 
tiny bit preferential treatment. Like I wouldn't say, you know, they're not living it high or anything, but you know, no, they, but they, it, they get. Look, if there's a choice between being in crap and in ultra crap, you're going to take crap. It, 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 it's it's just so important to find that shred of humanity in places like this, and that and Muay Thai is what gave him that. And it, it it's about his fight for survival, and it, you know the movie doesn't end on a particularly positive note. It's like no, he served his prison sentence. It sucks. <laughs> there's, there's no two ways about it. There was no magical happy ending here. But I met Billy Moore off the back of this because his big thing. Because let me be clear. In the Muay Thai world in Thailand, meth runs like water. <laughs> like it is that part that world is inundated with drugs, be it the people coming over and partying and doing kind of Thai boxing on the side, be it from you know the retired trainers, some of the fighters, um. It, it's, it's some of the gym owners who are all mafia boys, you know, it, it's just, it goes hand in hand. And Billy Moore used to always come around to the gyms and, you know, tell us his tale and be like, warning, I was one of you. This is what happened to me. Lost a chunk of my ear, spent a long time in prison and I had to fight. And I, you know, I'd met him a few times, but then seeing the movie after having met the guy was really like, <laughs> it really hit home what he went through. And I thought, what, was so you know, cold. You know what it is? And yeah. I mean, you're the only one who could answer this because I don't think many of us have had the opportunity to meet Billy. A picture is worth a thousand words. So when you're hearing a thousand words from someone, it's one thing, but then to visually see everything he's told you must hit a lot harder. Dude, you know, when he used to tell us stories about how he lost a chunk of his ear, about how he got some of the scars on his arms. Like, he didn't go into the gory detail that the movie did, but he told us that someone, all he said was that it was so bad in there that after his first night, someone hung themselves. And then the movie's like, yeah, because the person was gang raped. It's like, oh, blah, blah. <laughs> stop. What the hell am I watching? It's it's gnarly, bro. What's uh, and truly one of the great modern movies. What is your number two? My number two, I brought up very recently, and it's one that I know is is you all day long. You just haven't had a chance to see it. The artist. Now, this film is yeah, listed as a French. Uh, it's listed as a French comedy, but it doesn't need to. I mean, it's got John Goodman in it. And it's not that John Goodman's out to speak French, because guess what? It's a modern day silent movie. And it's absolutely fantastic for it. Um, as I said, I think it's, I see it as like reverse Singing in the Rain, where Singing in the Rain shows you um, people adapting to the talkie. This is a silent movie star refusing to take on the talkies, trying to live by a certain way. And the entire film showing how it's evolving but still just showing mal's moving and not doing it and just literally telling a film in this modern era like a silent movie of the past you know the absolute you know it's at the end of the film you it's not an entirely silent movie because i think there's like six words said near the end just at the very end of the film it was mm -hmm. absolutely amazing it was magical seeing this being done and i think from your reaction and i think it came up on a live i can't remember because i feel like everyone was like what, what what's this I like it was only purely from research that this came out i don't recall seeing any any trailers any cinema releases for it and I, I, don't get me wrong i'm not saying i'm the end all and be all of knowing everything to have a cinema release but this film was not mentioned and it was such a pleasant surprise to see that something that is such a bygone era can still be done masterfully in, in today's time. We're in an era of CG and, you know, de-aging and every other thing, you know, artificial, this, that, and the other. You could do anything you want, but to just go to the core root of films and make something, I thought it was great. Nice. Um, I'm, I'm assuming we're not doing a, a worse this week. 
I personally don't have one, and I think it's a bit weird to say an underseen film that you must not see. It was just a bit weird. Like, if if you want me to call one off the top underseen of my head for a reason, <laughs> yeah. Like, there was this film that was I remember produced by Quinta, or partly produced by Quinta Tarantino, or something called My Name Is Modesty. No one's seen it, and I highly recommend you to keep it that way if you've not seen it. The film <laughs> done me in. If we need to, but I didn't pick one. Hence, no poster. Fair. Um, all right, cool. Then on to my number one. And for me, the moment this topic came up, I was like, automatic, instant, nothing is going to take its place. And nothing has. I'm going to bring up the poster. Then I'm going to explain how this poster just does not do the freaking movie justice. I brought this movie up before. Let me just bring it up before I go into a preamble about it. The Flight of Dragons. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been brought mm -hmm. up before. This wonky cover art on the DVD cover could not be misrepresenting the movie more. Let me show you what it actually looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Apologize. Apologies for those of you watching or uh, listening on podcast. This is kind of like when they showed the Hulk running in <laughs> in um endgame and it's actually the iron hulk the um uh, hulk buster suit like that's two very different dragons there that's <laughs> very different. different like this is goofy and dorky and even the character models look at the the models flying his back they look so juvenile and then you look at yeah this. yeah that's weird it's so weird. misrepresented like i i would i would not criticize anyone who would walk past god forbid a dvd selling shop now but you know who would see that on a dvd shelf and be like that looks like yeah. trash not interested not for me when i tell you one of the best fantasy movies i've ever seen in consideration for my favorite animation ever it, 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 it's 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 high fantasy of the purest degree we live in a realm and era of magic where dragons rule the sky. But it's very meta because we're coming to a point now where mankind is discovering science, technology. Mankind is forgetting about magic. And so this group of wizards, a yellow wizard, blue wizard, green wizard, and a red wizard. The red wizard is evil, called Omadon conspire together to create the last realm of magic, protected from outside view, protected from the outside world. What Omadon wants to do, the red wizard who I've shown you in this image here, he wants to use magic to poison mankind, to turn brother against brother, start wars, all the bad stuff, right? Whereas the three other wizards want to overthrow Omadon and create their realm of magic as they saw fit. Now, here's where it gets really, really meta. Using one of their devices, they look into the human world. Bearing in mind, the movie is called The Flight of Dragons, which is based on a book by, what's his name? Author, Flight of Dragons. It's Peter something. Sorry, bear with me, because it's so meta. Flight of Dragons. Uh... What's his name? Peter Dickinson. That's it. So, book written by Peter Dickinson called Flight of Dragons. Movie based on the book called Flight of Dragons. These wizards are looking into the human world now to find a champion. Someone who can help them to overthrow Omadon because rules say wizards cannot fight wizards. They need to have a champion to do it. Okay? They look into the outside world and they find a Peter dickinson playing a board game called flight of dragons with character models that look exactly like all of them from the realm of magic so they clearly said you see had the levels of meta here so they're like this is our guy omadon's fully aware of what's going on and is trying to kill peter every single step of the way you've got huge battles with dragons and i mean epic knights elves creatures from under the sea all manner of dragon designs culminating in such an epic battle at the end, which is just like, oh, this is just great in every sense of the word. And guess who plays the voice of Omadon? 
freaking Darth Vader himself, James Earl Jones. I'm like, sorry, take my money. Take all the money right now. Take all the monies. I, I, I know you heard me say, I'll pay you a lot, have some money. No, no, take all my money. This film is a hidden freaking gem. I've not ever met anyone who's seen it. I've not ever heard anyone speaking about it. To be fair, I've never actually Googled Flight of Dragons review and heard YouTube because there's going to be corners of the internet which obviously have seen it. But I'm talking about... Love it. I'm talking about, in general, en passant, in my life, I have never crossed paths physically with someone who I have actively heard say, Flight of Dragons, that's a great film. AJ? Seek this mother flubber out. So, in a in a weird twist, I'm ch I'm checking it out. It's available on Apple TV, but from four forty. I don't, I don't. Uh, I'm not going to get into another tangent because we've done it. But I think we. It's, it's still bye, 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 bye. It's just one of those things. Charging while you've charged for subscriptions. Always a funny era for me. But anyway, well. A bit of consumer ignorance going on on your part there, because what you're doing with the renting is you're actually paying the studio. What you're doing with the platform is you're paying Amazon for things like running fees, their servers. Yeah, not, like, I, 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 get, look, I get it, but in, in a world where you've been treated to it, it's hard to accept it on another side. Do you understand? It's, it's just, mm. it, if they all were that, then you would accept it for that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's we are treated to other stuff. But anyway, we digress. We digress. Yeah. Seek this flubbing movie out. So good. What's cool. your number one? My number one. I kind of toyed with the artist or this one, but this one was a. It was a tough. It was a tough watch, and it's a, a big movie. It's also known as. Um, look, and then I go, but I, I've seen it as triggered on Amazon Prime. This film stars Justin Long and the lady who played Rose from Two and a Half Men. Um, Melanie oh, Linsky. Yeah, they play the parents to the, the, the young lad in this film. And it, it's about a boy who's very troubled, but very good at art. And he only has one friend. But this friend, between the two of them, they're always getting into trouble. They're, they're the, very, much, very much the outsiders, but they've got this little bond between them. And they they are they're always there for each other, but always getting in trouble, whether it be you know pickpocketing or just playing ball in the wrong areas and troubling neighbors and stuff like that. And one day, through bullying at school, they conceive a plan. We're gonna get you know sad, but but real in America, they're gonna shoot everybody in the school. They're gonna they're gonna go for it, and. Through that, the, the plan is developing, and at one point, the two guys fall like disagree. They have a fallen out, and it's now a case of you see this the kid that we're following, Justin Longside, starting to do a lot better in life, and it's there, and that you know that their friendship is dissipated. It's pretty much done until another student has an idea of going to shoot a school or has committed it in the school. I can't remember which one happens, but with that, they were like. This guy's taking our plan. That shouldn't happen. And then they reunite and they go to make this happen within their school. And they've got the whole scenario of how they're going to do it, you know, during like a school assembly, something we're not familiar with because we didn't have in school. But, you know, while everyone's in the room, block all the fire exits so no one can get out, go in there and take the guns that they're going for and go for it. That's that's their plan. Does it go through? Would it happen? Not for me to spill. But mm. what a film. What a film! I was it. The, the more you watch this film, you're like you could just see these troubled kids and what they're going through and what le you know. It's always the same. Anytime you hear the story, it was the loner kid and this, that, and the other. But to actually follow the journey in this film, it's quite harrowing. But really, yeah, it's a tough watch, but a great watch at the same uh, time. It's got a bit of a we need to talk about Kevin vibe to it, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 